So before we get going, let's uh, ask if anybody has a case. But before we uh, get a case, let's uh, introduce the co-discussant today. Hans has politely agreed to co-discussing, so I'm going to ask Hans to unmute and uh, maybe tell us a little bit about himself. Yes, my name is Hans and I'm a recent graduate from Ross University and presently I'm back in Germany just visiting my mom. So hopefully I'll match. Best of luck to you Hans, I know you're regularly here and contribute a lot and some of your cases are just fantastic so I uh, just hope to hear good news when it comes April. Um, I'm going to ask uh, other people. Sarah, how are you today? I'm doing really well. Yeah. Um, enjoying some uh, rainy weather here and snowy weather. Oh, yeah. It did snow up there, right? Uh, New York, New Jersey area. Yeah. Yeah. It was more than we've had in a while. So hopefully we'll get to play in the snow or make some snow wet or something. Awesome. Deborah, how are you? Are you in North Carolina or back uh, in Argentina? Hi, I am in Argentina. Now it's it's really hot here. We can see like how I am and how is Sarah, the difference about our clothes. <laughs> and yeah, I'm good. Excited for today. Awesome. Leah, how you been? I'm doing well. Um... We had spring last week and winter again this week. So um, I had to get out my winter clothes again. Yeah, it's interesting. We've had that uh, sort of fluctuating weather. We haven't had uh, snow here uh, in the Mid-Atlantic region, but uh, we it was 73 degrees last Thursday, and then it went to 30 degrees, or oh, that's Fahrenheit uh, on Saturday, and then it's back to 40s, 50s. So kind of weird weather pattern. And um, Maddie, how you been? You're, you're still out in San Francisco, I see. Yep, still out in San Francisco. It's been hailing here, which is a new thing. Um, and it's really nice to see a lot of, you know, familiar faces and maybe even some new ones here. Uh, and again, I'll just call out a request if anyone has a, a case that they would like to present. Um, we would love to hear from you. If not, we can pull up a human DX case as a backup one. Sure. David, how you been? I'm, I just finished my GI rotation, so learning about how to manage fibrotic patients, yeah, and so well, I enjoyed it a lot. And uh, Yasmin, how are you? <laughs> I'm very good, thank you. Um, yeah, so I have been doing observership. <laughs> I, I just I try to mute a little bit to I don't know how getting used to the US um system. <laughs> I hope that you didn't listen to any of them. Um but yeah, I'm learning a lot and it's really nice. And I see that Dr. Jazz has a case. Yay. Awesome. <laughs> the the small talk leads to a case. Everybody's probably like, oh, let's start with a case. Uh, uh, Jazz so, to the rescue. Yeah. <laughs> That's usually usually my tactic, just go around the board and just talk to people till we get a case. So uh how are you doing, Jazz Steve? You wanna unmute a bit and tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, uh, thanks, Bobby. Uh I'm doing good. I'm on service for um the medicine service on with the resident team. For those who don't know, I'm the chief resident at the U, U of R. Um I've been trying to become more of a regular here, just in terms of work life balance doesn't pay out for that. Uh, I'm gonna plug in my laptop so uh, my laptop doesn't die. It, that happened last time. So um, this won't be a very organized case. I apologize because I, I didn't expect to present, um, but this is a patient that I'm seeing actually on my team. Um, so it that would lead to a good differential. Um, so glad to be here. Yeah, awesome. I really appreciate you. Uh, whatever you can present, little tidbits, that's fine. We'll make a case out of it. So uh, I really appreciate you stepping up to the plate and uh, presenting. So Hans, uh, you, you're going to tackle the first aliquot. I guess we can deploy the whiteboard and, and get going. So, um, 
Right. So this is a 54-year-old gentleman um, with a past medical history of Crohn's disease, not on any treatment, hepatitis C, prior IV drug use, um, and prior absences as well. Um, with a recent, when I say recent, I mean four months ago with a um, endocarditis workup that did not reveal an organism that presented to this pre current presentation for the last um, week onset of like lower extremity rash. And it's more like um, postular and erythematous. And this is located in his right lower shin. Um, I'm going to provide some more history because he's uh, he has uh, like like I said, lots of history that might be irrelevant. He is homeless currently. Um, he was in a like lo long term care, but um, for other reasons, we had to leave. So, uh, in his last admission, he was treated for multiple abscesses in his left arm and right arm. According to the patient, he, these all started after being bit by a brown recluse spider like three years ago. But um, he did say that his last time that he used IV drugs was um, about a year ago. Um, and so other than that, he, he still will occasionally use cocaine. Um, he doesn't... Um, inject cocaine or other ways or smoke it. He uh, only does um, inhalation of, uh, of cocaine. Um, other things I want to share right now is uh, on physical exam, I uh, was not able to appreciate any murmurs. Um, there, his lungs sounded good. He was in no acute distress, um, non-ill appearing. His vitals were normal. Um, a little hypertensive, 141 over 80, but um, 87 heart rate, non febrile, um, and uh, respiratory rate about 18. Um, his rash, so I don't have the pictures, I'm sorry, but um, erythematous base with like a pustule um, that is scattered. Uh, on his right shin, one on the lateral surface, one in the middle. I'm going to stop there. It's a lot of information. That's a great uh, starting point there. What do you think, Hans? Yes, I would just um, ponder on his past medical history, which is Crohn's disease, but also about his uh, social history, which is being homeless, and uh, his past uh, use of IV drugs, as well as um, uh, the uh, finding of um, abscesses on his left and right arm after being apparently bitten by uh, a spider. What comes to my mind, he has no fever, but it does not necessarily rule out an infection. So the pustula, it's just the fact that he has pus which we need to examine further and find out what it constitutes in, whether it's neutrophils or eosinophils, and whether we can find any bacteria, might probably indicate either an infection. It might perhaps indicate an autoimmune disease or even something like an allergy. Autoimmune diseases, he does not ask for any, uh, did not report any pain in his lower extremities nor any other problems. So it's a wide open differential, which could be autoimmune like um, pustular psoriasis. I once came across general uh, pustular psoriasis, which is uh, involves with probably fever and pain. He's not a candidate for this, I don't think so. He uh, was abusing drugs. So I was thinking about cryoglobulinemia, but it does not show up as a pustular rash. And I think with those thoughts, I would like to pass the mic to you. 
Hans, th those are some incredible thoughts. Uh, you completely blew me away. I don't think I could have done a better job than than what you put there up there on the screen in the differential uh, teaching points box there. But uh, yeah, it's uh, it, the field, like you mentioned, is wide open for this differential. So I definitely would like to get a bit more information. But uh, I like that you took pieces of the HPI, the Crohn's, and then try to decipher what kind of skin uh, complications you can have. Uh, I don't see any medications, namely in the hospital. I always uh, train myself to look for drug eruptions or complications of drugs. So we usually look for like SGS-10, so bullous-like disease with mucosal involvement. Uh, AGEP is one. I know that you can have a postular rash, usually benign, but uh, definitely something that can be uh, can can look quite remarkable. We have uh, an abundance of mobiliform type generalized uh, rashes from drugs. Usually, you'll see that due to Bactrim four days in without any mucosal involvement or organ involvement. Dress syndrome or DIHS is another one. But in regards to this patient, though, I I would like to know the substance. Sometimes substances are mixed with other materials like levimosol can cause a um, vasculitis. And then you usually see those NAGM pictures of the week with uh, necrosis of the ear, um, those kind of pictures. So that would be something that would come to mind. And then namely this endocarditis, uh, the organism wasn't identified, but could that have then manifested in the skin? And the other things to look at is the routine staff. I don't, I, there is purulence like you mentioned. So What's common is common. MRSA can cause uh, pyogenic or purulent uh, cellulitis. Uh, what else could come to mind? Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, there's no SR, SR like uh, um, infections could be like uh, Pseudomonas ichthyma, uh, gangrenosum, things like that. Um, but but uh, I think um, we probably need more data to see what could that be? Could this be a harbinger of just routine uh, staph infection, toxic shock syndrome, strep, impetigo, eczema? I'm not quite sure. Uh, but there's no other manifestations anywhere. Uh, time, time is also key that this could spread. So during uh, what, what Jasti, um, following this patient during that time, I would also like to know if this rash or this uh, skin manifestation extends beyond the legs to other surfaces. So back to you, Jasti. Thanks, that was great. Um, both of you, that was excellent discussion of that. Um, so I'm gonna go back to his prior hospitalization. I feel like that um, was pretty interesting, to, at least in my opinion. So uh, he was admitted for about like 15 days um, and he came in with like a mild fever, not too bad, but they got, uh, he was having some trouble breathing, so they got a CT of his chest at that admission, which showed several bilateral peripheral solid nodular opacities that had a small area of central cavitation surrounding ground glass opacification, specifically in the right lung apex. Um, an echo was done, a TTE, which was normal, did not show any evidence of um, vegetation. So they obviously had him on broad spectrum antibiotics, uh, the bank and cefepime, I believe, at the time. And he, you know, um, also scheduled for a TEE. Uh, in that time, he did start to improve a little bit. His symptoms did improve. They sent the interferon gamma gold, which is negative. They sent um, a let me figure that here bunch of cultures. Um, all came back no growth to date. Fungal cultures came back no growth to date. Um, it did not send Bartonella. They did not send other like Coxiella and other things that you would think about uh, in terms of gram negative, uh, sorry, negative culture negative endocarditis. He also had a pretty large abscess um, in his left upper extremity, um, which they ortho drained and sent out cultures from that as well, which didn't really grow other than your fat forest was actually uh, methicillin resistant. So they continued her on the vancomycin. They recommended, uh, and then the TEE did not reveal vegetation either, which is the interesting part. 
So they recommended um, a repeat CT scan eight to six, uh, eight to twelve weeks, which then um, he did not get done, and we repeated it here um, during his admission this time around, which basically showed scarring at the prior uh, areas um, that had cavitary lesions. Um, what else that would be relevant? So his labs during this admission. Um, he has a mild leukocytosis at 10.5, uh, mild anemia at 11.2, uh, MCV is low at 78, uh, and he has a mild thrombocytosis as, at, at 348. Um, his LFTs are within normal limits. BMP is basically normal. Uh, his iron uh, studies show low iron, 14, um, transparent, 4. Ferritin 16, reticulocyte is inappropriate. Um, we also drew blood cultures. Um, and then today, uh, or sorry, yesterday, he started noticing new lesions popping up on his left side that are similar, erythematous with my little pustule. No new drugs um, that he was taking outside. In fact, he doesn't take any um, medication uh, on the out in the outpatient setting. I think someone mentioned a really good question. It's like, how do we know that this is Crohn's and, or um, IBD in general? We don't have outside records, but this was diagnosed 20 years ago, if not longer. Um, and um, it's just been in his history. Uh, and that's all I have for that one, unfortunately. We did check a syphilis and an HIV that was negative. His intracranial gamma is still pending for this admission. Um, and we are in the process of uh, getting a punch biopsy of the new lesion. So I just want to pause there to, for you guys to discuss. Very interesting. The game is afoot. What do you think counts? Well, I start by interpreting the results that we have so far. So it looks like his heart. It's not involved, and this fits very well with his physical exam, where we have no murmurs, and we have a negative TEE showing no vegetation. Now we have a pretty much normal labs, except for a mildly elevated white blood cell count. Maybe the differential might give us a little bit of a clue. We have anemia, but it is more related to low iron, probably because of his um, social status. And uh, we have a negative interferon gold, which might perhaps rule out tuberculosis, but these tests can be negative and yet the patient could be positive with this infection. And then we have the pulmonary involvement with nodules and yeah, opacities and central cavitation. This opens the door, especially in a patient who might be immunocompromised or neglected himself with possibilities of uh, fungal infections involving the, the lung as well. But I think the uh, blood cultures so far were negative with all of them. So my thought is still wide open, infection, autoimmune, maybe the punch biopsy gives us a good idea of what's going on and uh, his rashes don't seem to be painful. So it's still autoimmune and um, infection that I'm thinking of. Which infection, I don't know. Yeah, I agree, I agree there. Very, very good uh, uh, analysis, Hans, uh, with many different possibilities. So what would I really grab onto and really try and decipher or will give me the keys to the to the to the kingdom in getting the diagnosis. I really don't know, but we have uh, systems that are involved here: the lung, the skin, the GI system with Crohn's, and possibly the heart. With this, I, I see this workup that's continued for possible endocarditis, um, and with a. Uh, social history of um, of uh, intravenous substance use disorder. So trying to link that all together, definitely infection, as Han said, it puts infection 
high up in the possible differential here, but could there be something that's bubbling under the surface and a couple of them Hans hit on? Could there be malignancy? Could there be, um, um, again, exploring the bucket of infections? Uh, the patient uh, is not only on an, any immunosuppressive meds for, for Crohn's. Uh, and um, I think Hyla Beza came up uh, or asked uh, if the patient is HIV, if the HIV test was done, that was completely changed the approach to this patient, uh, who is the host. So um, again, I think uh, the broad categories, uh, um, infection, uh, those those cavitary lesions, what was coming to my mind was septic emboli. If there was endocarditis, that would be a pretty much not near maybe pathognomonic for endocarditis. You may get that on a board exam, a picture with an x-ray. I've seen that question before with septic pulmonary emboli, and they would ask, what is the next step? Uh, a echo would be necessary in that case and, and blood cultures. Um, malignancy, definitely. Um, and then you have... Uh, inflammatory conditions can manifest. We had a great case from uh, Anne-Marie of hypersensitivity pneumonitis with ground glass and also this mosaic pattern, which I learned from, from her case. So there's ground glass plus cavitary lesions. So you don't just have cavitary lesions. You have this inflammatory association, which could run the gamut of viral infections from COVID, uh, uh, influenza um, to maybe some autoimmune, some inflammatory hypersensitivity pneumonitis, maybe one of them as well, uh, to bacterial infections. So there are a large number of different infections that can manifest with this morphology on imaging. So at this point, uh, I think it would be uh, interesting to see the, see the next aliquot if there is any CT, I guess, um, sorry, uh, if there's a repeat CT to see if there's any change or if there's any other testing that you did that might help in, in getting to the diagnosis. Back to you, Dusty. Great. Um, I can potentially divide it into two more aliquots or I can, uh, in terms of timing, Ravi, what do you want me to do? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, we have the full hour, so we can, we can do the two aliquots. Okay. So, um, we noticed that on uh, we decided to add on um, some inflammatory markers from his initial labs, and his CRP was basically like essentially normal, it was like eleven, which is the upper limit of normal of eight, and then the next day it dropped down to six. But his ESR was fifty, sixty-seven, then fifty-three, and despite being on IV vancomycin and cefepine, still having more viral, oh sorry, more uh, lesions on his now left extremity and now his buttocks. Um, and I think someone asked, but if I, if I wasn't clear, he did have some um, very mild tenderness of palpation on, on, on some of these rashes. Um, and Ravi, we did get a repeat of uh, his chest and um, uh, it was basically like scarring in those areas that were uh, cavitary in the, in the previous CT. We also repeated an echo, which basically uh, showed an LVF of 59% and no um, evidence of valvular vegetation. Um, and then in terms of further history, uh, he you know, doesn't, like I said, he, he occasionally used cocaine, but does not use IV drug use. Um, he stays in a shelter most days, but um, there will be some times where uh, occasionally he'll live with his daughter once a week when uh, if it gets really cold outside, but um, for the most part, is outside in the streets. Um, we decided to add on some autoimmune um, labs or serology like ANA, uh, ANCA, um, and then with this whole potential history of IBD, we also sent some anti-mitochondrial antibody uh, and um, to see if this was uh, PSC. And his, his CT abdomen, I can show you guys, or not, not show, but like uh, read off the image of that. Basically revealed uh, no acute um, abnormalities in the abdomen or pelvis. There's nodular contours of the liver that is mild, uh, mildly enlarged in the left lobe. There is mild evidence of cirrhosis, no focal liver, liver lesion. Um, 
and they also mentioned that there's like mild uh, enlargement of the portal vein, which can represent early um, portal venous hypertension. Um, and then we also got some swaps um, for the the rash, uh, fungal uh, gram stain, and then also um, some viral ones. And I'll pause there. So that's this stuff. What do you think, Hans? Now I'm, I'm also concerned about his liver, which shows signs of cirrhosis. So could he have something like a chronic? We don't have um, a liver panel showing the hepatic virology. So maybe he has a chronic hepatitis C infection and that his rash could somehow be related to cryoglobulinemia as a very remote thought. Then of course the punch biopsy will be highly interesting because here we can probably exclude some viral origin of his presentation. Then autoimmune, ANA, ANCA, and um, anti-mitochondrial antibodies were negative. So that looks like some of the uh, autoimmune diseases can be excluded in all likelihood. His heart seems to be okay. We have a normal echo and this has been shown repeatedly. So I, I don't know yet how to combine everything, but in this chat, we already mentioned GPA as a possibility, which involves skin, lungs, but then of course we don't have any sinus involvement. It's still wide open. So I have no definite conclusion at this point. I think you spelled it out very well. Uh... It's it's uh, a little nebulous here, what uh, or how to pull this together. So I'm just sort of th I'm sort of thinking on along the, along the lines of yeah autoimmune conditions. Yes, GPA um, eGPA was mentioned, although we're, we're missing the upper respiratory tract issues, and um, sarcoidosis comes to mind as well. You can have the uh, shin lesions. You can have liver involvement, you can have uh, other involvement, cardiac, we had a case of cardiac uh, sarcoidosis, you can have lung involvement, although you may wonder, do we have bilateral high lymphadenopathy, but uh, again, there are four stages and you may have uh, scarring, you may have, particularly you may have lesions that don't always follow the bilateral high lymphadenopathy or scarring, so that's something that comes to mind, but again, following the, the autoimmune um, category, vasculitis again and again, the cocaine raises an interesting possibility. So uh, those are some thoughts. I'm not getting the signature of infection at this point. Yes, the Y count is normal, but then again, the patient could be immunocompromised and not manifesting with, uh, with the leukocytosis and also the temperature, he was afebrile. But uh, those are a few thoughts. I'm still, we, I mean, we've explored many different things here, which have been negated by this uh, this fantastic testing that uh, Jasdeep and his team has has done. They've been very thorough. So it leaves uh, a lot to wonder. But then again, with this introduction of uh, cirrhosis, the only other thing I could think about pulmonary uh, hepatic conditions, alpha one intertrypsin deficiency. Again, that would manifest possibly younger and uh, usually not with this morphology on the imaging, you would have more like um, uh, emphysematous changes, maybe lower lobe, um, uh, um, I guess, uh, not a pacification, but lucency on the, on the X-ray and premature emphysema, and then also the liver involvement. But those are a few things I'm thinking about. Um, anything else, Hans, before we get the last aliquot, would the last aliquot reveal the diagnosis? I'm, I'm gonna give you guys a bunch of information and then after I'll, so like technically two more, but okay. yeah. And, and yeah, I really like the thought, uh, Hans, about uh, the the um, vasculitis or cryoglobulinemia possibly uh, related to hepatitis. So that's also a very good thought. Back yes, to you. Enough. Now I'm just uh, excited to see the punch biopsy results. 
that might probably give us a few more clues. Yeah, the other infections that you now thinking this uh, while you were talking, uh, tuberculosis and NTM also comes to mind, could potentially cause systemic uh, manifestations. So uh, these are all great mimickers. We have a number of things, HIV, uh, tuberculosis, lupus, uh, and um, sarcoidosis, and um, a couple of others that may not come to mind, but uh, th these can manifest in many different organs and have systemic disease like this. Back to you, Jasteep. Great. Um, we were basically on the same line of, of thinking similar things. So the quant uh, gold came back negative again this time around. Um, and then we consulted a couple of consultants, ID and Palm. Um, I think they were also in the same line of like, they think it was less likely for those cavitary lesions to be like nocardia or uh, TB, aspergillus, just because because those are the things that we were thinking about and they were saying they're saying less likely because they scarred over. So clearly, I think Austin mentioned in the group in the chat that like give, considering that the, they scarred over that some treatment in the past clearly resolved those cavitary lesions. So it's most likely consistent with the septic emboli theory. Um, from the previous hospitalization. Um, other things was, this is where it gets a little interesting. So we are, uh, we got GI on board to do uh, colonoscopy. However, that has not been done yet. And the reason why we consulted GI is um, he, one of his swab, like, sorry, one of his um, like punch biopsy results came back uh, concerning for erythema nodosum. Um, and I'm going to pause there because there is one more aliquot. Hans, very interesting piece of the puzzle here. How does that move the needle for you? And now it moves it very strongly towards sarcoidosis as a possibility because we have the lung involvement and we have erythema nodosum as a most likely um, reason or sign of his um, lower extremity rash plus a mild tenderness. So this seems to fit, but it's ulcerating or pustular. Let's see. Yeah, yeah, I absolutely agree. It opens the door to revisiting the possibilities you had uh, initially explored, uh, namely Crohn's, some of Yasmin had mentioned also. Uh, Crohn's disease uh, and its association with uh, the the shin. So everything under those, and also sarcoidosis and um, a few others that that it is it is associated with autoimmune phenomena. So um, I like to see what what Jasteep has in store for us if he has the final diagnosis. Back to you, Jasteep. Um, so one of the reasons I was pausing of why I wanted, uh, like I, if I, if I, like doubting myself to present this case is we don't have a, like a solid diagnosis. Um, that's what I was hoping someone else would volunteer. Um, but so what is weird about this case or something that I'm struggling with is when it, when I heard erythema and dosum, it's, a bit, it's actually an umbrella term. It could be caused by multiple different things and Crohn's and um, Hans mentioned uh, other uh, possibilities too. Um, the weird part, like sarcoidosis, the weird part is that he hasn't really been having flares of his Crohn's, especially with any treatment. I guess it's still possible. Um, so, um, and I was, I was personally concerned about endemic uh, mycosis with either histo uh, that can definitely manifest in the terminal ileum as well and then can have rats and other lung involvement. But Palm and ID did not think so, just especially given the fact that his um, cavitary lesions uh, resolved. So currently the diagnosis that we have is one of some, so the lesions on the right uh, shin was more consistent with erythema and endosin, and that's what the biopsy showed. It did not show the one on the biopsy on the left shin. And that one uh, came back positive to monkeypox. So those lesions were, especially the ones on the buttocks and then the, 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 the left shin. So he was actually diagnosed with uh, a viral uh, rash consistent with monkeypox, which is 
makes sense. He didn't get better on the IV bank. Um, Special team didn't really improve his uh, course. Um, so we just continued separate between two days ago. We continued the bank because of his history of MRSA. Uh, didn't really get better, but wasn't, you know, wasn't worse off. And then that made sense with like a non-bacterial ideology for the rash. The what really prompted me to get ANA and like other autoimmune stuff is the fact that I was taught that um, if ESR is elevated, but CRP is near normal, uh, it's concerning for lupus, but other autoimmune conditions as well. So that's what prompted us to do that. But I think we might have a, a diagnosis here. Uh, it's kind of mean for me to pick something that has two diagnoses, but I'm sorry. I hope this was a good case. Oh, no, that's a fantastic case. Yeah, we always have to think about, we're trying to always unify one, every, the, the case into one diagnosis, uh, but but sometimes we have to, pick apart and run two simultaneous diagnoses at the same time. So double the trouble. And uh, here very well, we, we thought we were onto the possible diagnosis with this uh, erythema nodosum, but then uh, monkeypox definitely with, with the risk factors uh, of intravenous substance use disorder, um, homelessness, that definitely is something to think about. And, no, uh, I honestly have only seen one case, so it's not at the top of my differential diagnosis, but we must learn to consider it in our differential diagnosis when approaching dermatological conditions, especially of, especially pustular, of the pustular variety. But um, yeah, I'd like to know uh, what uh, what the final diagnosis is with the erythema nodosum is. It's uh, Unlikely, like you mentioned, he hasn't had exacerbations of his Crohn's disease. So could there be some other uh, systemic infection or uh, inflammatory condition that's uh, at play here? Hans, any reflections? Well, first of all, it would be my first monkeypox case. I cannot explain the lung findings. So that could be just something different. So he has two diagnoses to be considered one for the lung, because we still have the nodules and we still have to explain what's happening in the liver. But his rash, if the monkeypox were shown to be positive, at least one thing we can resolve. It should go away on its own. I think we don't have a medication. Considering that we have some time, I'm happy to answer some questions if that's okay with everyone. Um, so I, the lung findings, they, like I said, the cavitary lesion is re resolved. Um, like there was there was scarring in those same area that, were, that had cavitary lesions in the first admission. So they were convinced that this is no longer like an active process. Now, in terms of what caused the septic emboli, the first admission uh, or the previous admission, they um, were pretty convinced that that was a like MSSA or M MRSA septic emboli and. Uh, they weren't 100% because it, sometimes it's hard to check chart review, but uh, they one of the theories was maybe that he got broad spectrum antibiotics before they drew blood cultures, and that's why it came back negative, but really it was just MR, MRSA or MSSA. Um, and then I think the other question was cirrhosis, Hans. That's a great point. Uh, they believe currently that it is most likely due to chronic hep C that led to cirrhosis. In the past, he was as someone that drink, drink alcohol, but he's been abstained from alcohol for over like 20 years. I agree with everyone though, like it is like a, a case that's still open. It'll be interesting to see what his colonoscopy shows and I'm happy to, on the YouTube channel, I'm happy to post on under the comments of uh, what, what the colonoscopy shows. I think it was great though, a great exercise in teasing out the differential for postular lesions. So, with the chat and what Hans had mentioned, we have a great list of possibilities uh, that we can refer to whenever we're faced with another patient with a pustular rash. So always good to brush up on, on some der dermatology. Uh, any final questions or we can proceed with the teaching points? I guess, da David, are you able to start with the teaching points? Yeah, perfect. So, well, 
great case um, that uh, captures the difficult the the difficult that uh, appear in the the reality and um, and that started with uh, a rash in a patient with Crohn or Crohn Crohn. Uh, and these are some of the some of the questions that uh, we have to ask in, in every rash uh, to to narrow the DEX, the, the Y, the distribution, the red, the morphological appearance, and the, if, if there is visceral involvement. Uh, the Crohn disease uh, make us think some of the dermatologic manifestations associated with this uh, disease, such as uh, neutrophilic dermatosis. As, such as in Pyoderma gangrenosum or Swiss syndrome, uh, also erythema nodosum, uh, idadenitis superactiva, psoriasis, or cutaneous uh, small, vessels, small vessel vasculitis that were also mentioned. And there's also this um, more rare possibilities of metastatic Crohn skin disease. And then the case uh, take a, a flip and with the appearance of a Capitary lung lesions that uh, have a broad DDX, uh, that, uh, comprehends uh, infection, malignancy, autoimmune, and other more causes uh, that uh, finally, in this uh, case, um, appear to be uh, septic emboli from, from uh, I, I guess, uh, something like uh, SS. A or S uh, or S aureus um, bacteremia, um, and well, later other uh, findings such as the cirrhosis uh, make us uh, wonder if there are some uh, some disease, any disease that uh, could uh, explain both the the dermatologic the uh, pulmonary and the uh, liver uh, manifestations uh, between these diseases, TB and sarcoidosis could be uh, the the main uh, possibilities. But here, uh, the final uh, biopsy uh, of the of the skin lesion um, demonstrated uh, erythema nodosum that is linked with with many infections, uh, also autoimmune and, and malignancy uh, causes. Um, in this case, uh, the, the biopsy also revealed uh, a monkeypox um, infection that, well, uh, it's a bit difficult to, for me to, to arrange with the rest of the case. Uh, but, well, uh, very interesting case that, uh, yeah, uh, reveals the the difficult that uh, difficulties that I, um, appear in the real life when when seeing these these complex patients. Yeah. Absolutely, David. I absolutely agree with you as well. So definitely, we'll be researching more about monkeypox to become familiar with this with this condition. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, take care, everybody. Thank you, Hans, uh, for co-discussing. It was a pleasure again to to discuss with you. And uh, thanks, Jesse, for the case. You definitely uh, sparked our interest and thanks for the education. Take care, everybody. Have a great rest of the Tuesday afternoon. Bye.